The Scorn Empire, Part 7. Troops of the Scorn. Whereas soldiers of other races fight for victory in order to survive or glorify their nations, the Scorn desire only an honorable death worthy of exaltation. Every Scorn knows that only torment and annihilation awaits them in the afterlife. Their only hope of escaping this terrible fate is to embrace death in the pursuit of battlefield glory. This fatalistic outlook itself is a potent weapon. Soldiers of the Scorn Empire seek neither comfort nor recreation and can be pushed to incredible lengths in the pursuit of victory. Scorn commanders subject their troops to sorcerous mortalurgy to extend their vitality in combat and to bolster their endurance long after marches after uh, on long marches across harsh environments. Master mortalurgists can reduce a Scorn's need for food or water by applying simple rituals and surgical procedures. These rites typically have deterious, de deterious consequences for the affected souls, but they rarely impact on mor morale, for Scorn are raised from birth to expect and even embrace the realities of their society. In fact, some of the most powerful mortalurgists can transform troops into hollow shells of their former selves that require nearly no substance and fear no agony or death. Near perfect warriors in the service of the Scorn conquests. The commanders of the armies of the north of the western reaches has ad have, have adopted strategies to cope with life in one of the harshest places in all of Imarin, the Bloodstone Desert and its nightmarish regions, including the Stormlands and the Abyss. Such adaptations have enabled the Scorn to not only survive these terrible environments, but also to conquer them. As this, these stoic peoples have inexorably advanced west, they have established fortresses along a continuous train of resupply and reinforcement, as well as providing numerous mustering points for all their attacks in the west. Even with the refuge provided by these garrisons, the journey from the Scorn homeland is perilous, and many warriors die en route. Scorn commanders welcome this reality, knowing that the desert culls the unfit, most the most resolute and worthy soldiers will str struggle to survive. The ancient term Sabaf designates an, a large collection of cohorts gathered under a single leader. After the conqueror's reformations, this term was adapted for divisions of major territorial armies, including the massive army of the western reaches. Each dominar controls a Sabath, with the size varying considerably depending on the number of, sabath co of subordinate cohorts. Warriors who hold the rank and title of Tyrant or Lord Tyrant are house leaders, subordinate to specific dominars, and each leads a cohort. Traditionally, a cohort is the largest armed force that a single house can field. The difference between a tyrant and a lord tyrant is subtle, but represents the size and influence of the tyrant's house and his respective cohort. It is not uncommon for a lord tyrant or a prestigious tyrant to be placed in charge of multiple subordinate tyrants, though such appointment is rare at most though such appointment is rarely permanent and entails specific strategic oversight for the duration of an engagement. In the Army of the Western Reaches, cohorts range in size from two to 5,000 warriors. Any scorned warrior promoted to the rank of tyrant who does not already command his own house is allowed to found one and take his place among his peers. Upon doing so, he is granted the full privilege of his rank and may construct a proper fortification to support his dominar. Tyrants and dominars of older houses take a dim view of such upstart dynasties. A cohort consists of ten decurium, varying in size depending on the overall size of the cohort. Most cohorts include a very variety of scorn disciplines, including but not limited to cataphracts, Praetorians, and Venators. Because a cohort represents the entirety of a tyrant's house, the exact mix of warriors depending on the traditions and wealth of the house. Specialists outside the warrior caste, like pain givers and extollers, also accompany cohorts to whatever degree to where such support can be arranged by the ranking tyrant. Depending on the temperament of the cohort's tyrant, these specialists might instead be classified as equipment in the same sense as ammunition or war beasts. Each decorium is led by a primus, typically a praetorian or a cataphract. 
Decoriums contain at least two types of warriors. Each modern decorium can act as an independent battle force and is accompanied by at least a few soldiers armed with a variety of weapons. A decorium's primus is often granted significant latitude to carry his objectives, or carry out his objectives. Subordinates to the primus of a decorium are the veteran Dakar, each whom leads a tabarnar of between 20 and 50 scorn. Tabarnar are usually composed of warriors from a single discipline. The Tabanar are, are the core of the Scorn battle lines and the standard that all Scorn leaders use to elevate relative troop strength. The term Tabanar derives from the Scorn word for tent. In ancient times, the term described soldiers who shared a tent while on campaign. A Taberna is a tightly knit group of individuals who train and live together for years at a time. Many develop unique rites, superstitions, and traditions, as well as a specific ancestor cult. The term decurium began the des to describe a group of ten tented tents of warriors collected for large attacks, a st historical arrangement that still holds true to this day. The warriors of a tebenar are divided into subgroups called datha, each with containing six to ten soldiers trained in a single discipline. Each dantha is led by a single Dakar who is responsible for the, uh, who has responsibilities and duties are directly comparable to those of a Signarin or Kadorian sergeant. Addendum Scorn House Glyphs Army slash cohort. The first symbol on a, any banner identifies the army or cohort. For forces serving in the Army of the Western Reaches, this symbol is black with a gold field, but some cohorts use other house colors. Subordinate houses slash decoriums. The second symbol on any banner reflects that the house and its position in the scorn hierarchy. Tabanar. The third symbol on the banner identifies these groups Tabanar. Datha. The final symbol on the banner identifies that specific Datha.